Hi, welcome to the Java programming step-by-step -step video tutorial. The very first question that is asked is, why did Java become famous? Java became famous because it is a platform independent programming language. So the next question that is asked is, what is platform independence? Now, if you take a language like C or C++, now you write them on top of the Windows operating system and you compile them. Once compiled, the C and C++ languages makes use of the Windows operating system resources to run. So you cannot take this compiled C and C++ code and try to run it on the Linux. So this C and C++ are not platform independent because they depend on their operating systems. So wherever, whichever platform you compiled in, you have to run them only on that particular platform or that operating system. So how did they make Java platform independent? What they did is they brought in another layer between the Java language and the operating system. The layer is called the Java Virtual Machine or JVM for short. Now there are different virtual machines for different operating systems. Now this virtual machine is dependent on the operating system. But Java is will run on top of the Java virtual machine. So like this. So thereby there is a layer. So you can see that they have brought in a layer between the language and the operating system thereby making Java a platform independent language. Java was originally created for creating programs for your mobile phones, your refrigerator and your TV and your cars and all those things. Since all these various devices had different types of operating system, they decided that they want a language which is platform independent and they hit upon this idea called the Java Virtual Mission. So this is the reason Java is called a platform independent language. Now in this particular course, we are going to do these following chapters. In chapter 1, we are going to learn about the installation of the Java development kit, the Java virtual mission, etc. and the Eclipse ID that is the integrated development environment. This tool is used to write Java programs. In chapter 2, we will learn the basic syntax and statements that are available in Java including like you know data types and operators. Then we will do like a few exercises and then a small review of all the topics we had done in chapter 1. In chapter 3, we are going to learn about the class and object. We are going to learn like the various like how to write a method. We are going to learn how to write a method, the method signature and constructors. In chapter 4, we are going to be introduced to the object-oriented programming concepts, especially what makes a language object-oriented programming language. We are also going to learn about encapsulation and data hiding and polymorphism and overloading. Now, with all the concepts we had learned till chapter 4, we are going to do a small sample project using the Java programming language. Then we will do a quick review of all the topics. In chapter 6, we are going to learn about inheritance. That is like we are going to learn about abstract classes, interfaces and like, like the super keyword and the concept of overriding. In chapter 7, we will be introduced to collections that is list, array list, hash map and generics. And then we will have like a quick review of all the topics we did till then. In chapter 8, we will look at like various types of exceptions that is try catch finally and throw and throws. Chapter 9, we will look at the final keyword, the static keyword and variable arguments and then we will finish off this entire course with a final review.